seven o'clock come to order. Uh, we'll deal with the uh, December 16th. We haven't had a meeting since December 16th. Uh, well, I know, it's hard to walk. Uh, I don't know if you'll move around right when you came back. <laughs> I hope everybody's had a chance to read. Yeah. <laughs>
Chairman, you have to vote for the rules to accept the rules. Right. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on the rules? No. No. Glad to have them completed. Glad to have them completed. Multi year of business. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the rules? I, I move that we accept the rules as uh, submitted. Mm -hmm. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was quick. Good. Okay, I'm going to be cruise myself and uh, talk to you back this year shortly. I can sit here or you? Yeah. It's up to you. you. It's up to you. Wherever you, you like, it's up to you. Yeah, you're the chair. <laughs> you want to get a better picture of you? Yeah, that's what I want is a better picture of you. <laughs> Public hearing for case number 17.05 for an application received from Mr. Donald Thurston requesting a special permit to the zoning board to restore the front steps, front steps slash portico is now open. This public hearing will proceed in an orderly fashion. I ask for cooperation in the following procedure. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to be heard after the application is presented and the board members have asked questions. The secretary will be recording what is said. Therefore, when you address the board, begin by stating your name and address. Speak slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Do any members of the board have an interest in this property or the issue or stand to gain or lose any financial benefit as a result of the outcome of this hearing? No. Public notice for this application was posted at the town hall, sent to a certified list of parties and interest, and was published in the town common on April 5th, 2017, and April 12th, 2017, and reads as follows. <coughs> Case 17.05. A public hearing will be held at the town hall annex, 39 Central Street, on Thursday, April 20, 2017, at 7.15 p.m. to act on an application received March 22nd, 2017, from Mr. Donald Thurston. Applicant is requesting a special permit from the Board of Appeals to restore Front Steps Portico. The property is located at 237 Main Street, Rowland, Mass. The property is in the Central District and is shown on Assessor's Map 26, Block 28. At the public hearing, members of the public may ask questions and present evidence that supports either the approval or denial of this petition. The purpose of this hearing is for the board to hear and consider the pertinent facts relating to the application and to approve with any conditions or deny. Before hearing from the public, the applicant will be allowed to present their case, and then board members will be allowed to ask questions or comment. The applicant now has the floor. Good evening. I, uh, Went to the building inspector and he told me that I had to come to this board uh, because what I'm doing is it is not a repair. I have put steps on them presently and they are deteriorated and I have to take them out because I have a broad and sill on the front floor. In order to repair that, I've got to get the steps out. And I decided that I'm going to replace it with wood and deposit materials as approved by the Cloud Historic Commission. I have a picture here.
showing you my house back in the As I understand it, the only real problem is the fact that since the zoning bylaw was instituted, you are now going to be a little closer to the front line. No, I won't be any closer to I won't be any closer to the line. You're just, you're just within, within the structure. Mm -hmm. You're just within the setback. Yeah, no, there's a setback. There's a setback issue. I thought it was the same dimension. No, I don't think it is the same dimension. What, <coughs> what is it that? It's new construction. The bylaw states reconstruct has to get a commitment from the zoning board for. Changing it from brick to wood, the building inspector says that's new construction. I have to go to the zone. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's and it's right on the same footprint. It's on the same footprint. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, the drawing is the sketch and the drawing is already been approved. 
talking about the historic commission. It's a historic district. Okay. Yep. Got it. <coughs> no, well, I don't know. We have a letter dated April 4, 2017. From the Board of Selectmen. The Selectmen reviewed the special permit application submitted by Don Pearson to restore the front steps portico at 237 Main Street. They have no comments. We have a memo from the Board of Health. The Health Department has reviewed the provided application plan. There are no comments or concerns. We have a letter dated March 30, 2017 from the Fire Department. The Fire Department has no issues with this application. Please do not hesitate to contact me. The Planning Board has submitted a memo. I have reviewed the information packet for CBA case 17.05 and determined there are no planning board issues to consider. The Raleigh Historic District Commission has issued a letter. The RHDC has approved the design of the following materials for the proposed front steps portico. 2, 237 Main Street. No work stipulations on this product. the evidence unless you have something else Mr. Thurston. Anybody else want to be heard? No. Questions by the members? No, I'm fine. I'll make a motion to accept the presented. I'll second it. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Cemetery P. That application received April 24, 2017, from Associates, Incorporated on behalf of 420 Newport Turnpike LLC, now announced in 1969. The applicant is appealing the decision from the Lobby Inspector to the RPBL 6.5 and specifically 6.5.1. 6 Specifically, 6.5.1.4, applicant is proposing to construct a new building to be attached to an existing building to house HVAC, bringing the total height to 40 feet in excess of the allowed maximum of 35 feet. The property is located in the fourth point of the court term by the following maps. The property is in the Dislike Industry District and is shown in the census map 18. At the public hearing, members of the public may ask questions if these are evidence that supports the approval of the time of this petition. The purpose of this hearing is to report to hear and consider the pertinent facts related to the application and to approve the conditions for denial. Before a hearing from the public, the applicant will be allowed to present their case and board members will be allowed to ask questions for comment.
Good evening. Jim, Jim Presser. I'm an attorney in Hamilton. I'm representing Sandy Patrickin, Brian Patrickin, and I have April Ferrara from Meridian with me with a more legible copy of the planned building. And if I can point it out to you, this is really an addition to an existing building. So what is proposed is a 40,000 square foot building, approximately this footprint, that will be an addition to an existing building. The building itself is under the 35 foot height limit. The mechanical room that will sit on top of the building is five feet above the 35 foot height limit, and that's the basis of our problem. So the building inspector, Mr. Ward, and I think you all have a copy of it, uh, issued a letter basically taking the position that if any portion of the structure is habitable, then all of the building has to meet the 35 foot height requirement. I think that's, I, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but I think he was being cautious, maybe for my client's sake. Um, I think the bylaw was intended to address particular portions of the structure and not to encompass the entire building. And if you, if you look at the provision that we're, that we're talking about, 6.5.111 says the height of any structure in all districts shall not exceed 35 feet or two and a half stories. Um, 6.5.1.2 says building height shall be measured at the ver as the vertical distance from the average elevations of the existing lot grade at the front of the building to the highest point of the top story in the case of a flat roof and to the mean height between the plate and the ridge in the case of a pitched roof. The, the section that is hanging us up is 6.5.1.4, which says limitations of height shall not apply to flagpoles, chimneys, radio and television antennae, windmills, silos, water tanks, public utility structures, and similar non-inhabitable structures. And I guess my example in support of why we think a building permit should be issued here is if you focus just on the chimney, if someone wants to build a house with a chimney that's a couple of feet above the 35 foot limit, this provision allows chimneys to be above 35 feet. If you take the building inspector's position, it couldn't be attached to a habitable structure. And we looked at this and thought, well, where would you build, why would anyone build a chimney that wasn't attached to something habitable, a house or a commercial or industrial building? I just think he's, I don't think the section of the bylaw is the clearest thing in the world, but I think he's making a, a really restrictive interpretation of that. And, and I think chimneys is the perfect example for it. This section right here, which is, Five feet above your 35 foot height limit. How much square footage? Well, and the building's 40,000, so that's probably 25% of it. The, the penthouse is 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet. So it's 25% of the overall building. Five feet of which, of course, is above your 35 foot limit. There's nothing in that other than mechanical equipment. There's no access to it other than by tradespeople, workers. And the fact that the rest of the building is occupied it is a fact, but it's a fact that I don't think should be taken into account when you're making that type of a determination. And to do anything other than this, Okay. We, we can get into this in part two, is, I guess. But what is the exact purpose of that? 
Do you have a layout of the mechanical equipment? Uh, Which one is it? No, I think the best way to describe it is it's going to look like the uh, the boiler room of the battleship, from what we can see. Is it going to look like the existing biolabs mechanical penthouses? Yes. Similar to that? Yeah. Uh, you all familiar with the ones in Ipswich? Yes. Well, this is the same sort of thing. They're, they're fitting out a building on our property now. And there's a great deal of mechanical equipment inside the building. Uh, what they want to do is increase the amount of equipment. And they'd like it enclosed so that they can service the equipment in the winter and it will be more uh, sight lines. Uh, not that it's the, the sight lines are a big thing because nobody other than people in the park are really going to see it. It's at the very back northwest corner of the park and the only thing it overlooks is the old Girl Scout camp and the land that we uh, donated to the town. So there are like large 100% outside air units, is that what's going on? Yes, in yes. Or the chiller kind of equipment? Or? Yes, exactly. Would be the best way I could describe it, it's chillers. That answer your question? Mm -hmm. so. Sandy, Sandy, do we want to say, my, my name's Brian Patrick and uh, Sandy, Sandy's my father. I don't know what the exact configuration is of the ones in Ipswich that, that you're exactly referring to because it's a, a much larger campus. Mm -hmm. But if you've seen our buildings, the exterior panel that we have that will be on the, the 35 feet and the glass curtain walls, that is going to be what will be similar for the mechanical penthouse. So it'll just look like it's the same building, just a little bit taller in that, in that small portion. Not unlike biolabs in Ipswich. What I was well, getting at was, is panel. there going to be room to have an office or anything in there? No. Or is it going to be pretty full with mechanical? Yeah, it's just, it's just for, for mechanical, uh, mechanicals. No heat, no ventilation, or no uh, air conditioning. Uh, I think there's probably be plenty of heat generated by the equipment. The difference with this one versus building six, which is where they're fitting out now, is that when they took that building, that building was already built and existing, and they had said if we could have done this, we would. With this one, can be built to their specifications. And that's why they're requesting it, so that they can maximize the, the usage of the building. And there really isn't a lot of extra room on the site for putting all this stuff on the ground without using up a lot of valuable parking expenses. Do, do, do you need planning for, for this? Yes. Do you got it? Yeah, they do. Yeah. I, 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 can I address? Uh, I'm, I'm sort of curious. That was one element that I'm struck by, is that this whole process had to go, was vetted by the planning board yes. last fall. Yes. And did this subject of height come up? No, because we didn't have tenant at that time. It's almost, it's almost. So that, so was, was this? El well, that's, that may be relevant. So, this was approved without this superstructure that's going to be at the top. Yes. Being part of the plan. Yes. So that happened after the fact. Yes. Correct. So every approval was based upon a flat roof at 35 mm -hmm. feet or thereabouts. Yes. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I'm, I was amazed that the planning board had to wait three or four months from their approval to come before us with it because it would have hung you up. Biolabs is a wonderful tenant, but they don't always make decisions in the time frame that we would prefer. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. What's, what's this? Um, do we have a what are the dimensions of the room? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. What's the one? Okay. The dimensions. I, I, yeah. do you have one? A hundred feet square, I believe. The, yeah, the it's, ten, it's, ten it's, it's ten by ten. Yeah, it's, it's ten thousand square feet. Okay, I have a letter here from the planning board. No, ten by ten is on the reader. Uh, this is from Kurt Baker. Wait a minute, Tom Plano. I review the information packet from CBA case number 
17.06 pertaining to the appeal of the town building official determination regarding the application of the zoning, zoning bylaw type requirements specified in section 6.5.1.4 that the proposed mechanical penthouse requested by the applicant does not constitute a similar non habitable structure and is therefore not considered eligible for exemption from the 35 foot height limitation requirement. Be advised the plan to approve the special permit modification for the proposed building associated with this request on January 11, 2017, which was attached to the ZBA's review packet. In regards to the ZBA request, I would offer that the applicant's assertion that the mechanical penthouse area is non habitable is reasonable in the narrow sense that spaces for mechanical equipment are not intended to be spaces where workers conduct business activities associated with proposed business like industry industrial uses. However, in support of the building inspection determination, I must agree the proposed mechanical area does not constitute a similar non habitable structure comparative to the uses specified in section 6.5.1.4. I will note that the proposed mechanical space differs from flagpoles, chimneys, radio, and television antenna, windmills, silos, water tanks, and other public utility structures, and that these fixtures are very, have very specialized functions for which the height is necessary to the proper operation and the use to which they are accessible. For example, radio, television antenna, cell towers, and the like may need height to receive and send clear transmissions. Flagpoles need height so they can be visible to the public view. Windows so as to maximize wind energy input. Water tanks so as to utilize gravity in order to achieve maximum water pressure. As for the proposed mechanical room, the application only indicates the space as currently built is insufficient for the prospective tenant and that the space allocated should supersede the zone plan. Moreover, the uses cited in section 6.5.1.4 are often associated with public utilities that distribute a public good which benefit citizens at large. Here, the applicant is proposing that the exemption made to fit the specific tenant space needs. However, doing so would mean to begin interpreting the zoning bylaw requirements with a more inclusive notion of what constitutes similar non habitable space. In this situation, the ZBA should be cautious to avoid setting a precedent for exemption from the zoning height requirement and will benefit from the assumption that future applicants will seek the same exemption to be applied to buildings and not just the structures whose function necessitates greater height. If the ZBA does approve the applicants appeal, the applicant should be advised that they may need to make a formal request to the planning board to determine if the proposed change to the building height would constitute a significant modification to the special application or the modification to the building as a field correction. Thank you for the opportunity to come up with this application. That's what the planning board is.
health department has reviewed it by their application plan. An existing septic system is in place. The building permit review has not been conducted. There will be no flow associated with the mechanical building. There are no comments or concerns. Selectman reviewed the application for the zone report. CDA for a special permit for the building permit may do not have any comments. If you didn't put a roof on this, it wouldn't matter. It's a little different than putting AC units and stuff on the roof. I mean, why Why did it have to be? I know you that like to work on it in the wintertime, but I mean, you have all kind of rooftop stuff that is made out for the elements and you work on it. I mean, it's Biolabs does things. I know that. I, that I'm was the inspector in this the Soviet, so I know Biolabs. Bio, bio, bio. I know that. Hey, this is This is, I mean, you're putting us in a, in a situation here which, you know, like I say, if there's no cover, then you can, you know, do it no matter what. And, and now your, your parking is all in the front. Yes. Why couldn't you go in the back part of that building three, that little further over if you had to, and put it there too? I mean, they had to have it in close. Well, I know it's more cost probably and all that. We, we use that as outside storage. For, for Ipswich Bay's operation. <coughs> and also directly behind the building is where the septic system is. And the septic system is quite large because it <coughs> services uh, all three of the buildings. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, can I? Uh, I, I have a couple comments. Uh, I, uh, uh, firstly, I, I agree with the uh, <clears throat> building inspector's interpretation of the bylaw. Uh, I think the intent of the bylaw is to protect structures. Um, but I also agree with you that the bylaw is vague uh, and not well written. Uh, I don't personally view this as a habitable, non-habitable issue at all. Uh, I, I view it purely as a height issue. Um, I think that's that's what Ken is responding to, and our board has has consistently asked him to um, be cautious about granting any permit uh, that would potentially be found as a violation of a zoning bylaw. So by default, if Ken questions an issue, uh, he refers it to us for us to interpret the bylaw. Which is doing. Um, where the bylaw is not clear, it leaves it, in my mind, in a gray area. Um, in terms of the building and the specific use of that space, I mean, the building, uh, the uh, planning uh, department uh, does point out 
that this is not a public issue, it's a personal issue. You've got a tenant who needs space, it's cost effective for you to build this up there on the roof, um, more so than it is to try to place it anywhere else on the property, and I get that too. I mean, it's, it's certainly got to be cheaper to just reinforce whatever weight you have to support back there, but that's fine. Um, I'm, I visited the site, I know your site, this is on the rear of the building. It's probably barely visible from the front of the building. The back of the building is, it faces open land. Nobody's back there anyhow. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you're a good commercial um, res, uh, business in the town. Uh, you build nice properties. Um, the purpose of this board, in my opinion, is to uh, look at situations and where situations end up being non-conforming, if possible, grant special permits in order to allow for those things to occur. We do that all the time. Whether it's a sidewalk, whether it's a deck, uh, you know, whether it's the placement of a driveway. Um, and going back to this, you're only, you know, it's the rear of the building, you're only incurring five extra feet of space. Um, I, don't, I don't have a problem with with the proposal as you have it. I don't have a problem with what you want to do. Uh, I don't think it's detrimental to the community. I don't think it's detrimental to the environment. Um, if so permitted, it's a, it's a special provision. It's not something that sets a precedent as a default action that, can, that any other applicant in the future can assume they're going to get. Because we look at every case, we might look at another case um, where it would be different. Um, the definition in the bylaw about where the height of your roof actually is on a flat roof. I'm assuming based upon what you have here, that at that mean height in front of the building puts you up a few feet higher than than where you're indicating the top of the second story is because you've got an extra buffer height here which you don't seem to fully need. Um, so as, as long as that information is consistent with what you're telling us, I, I, you know, five feet in an incursion where it is an incursion, if it was right on Route 1 and it was the whole building and you wanted to put a whole floor and it was facing, I don't think we would be in a position to approve that kind of thing. But I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. I see it purely as a height issue. And I, I, think, I think under the, to, to look at 25% of the total structure in the rear of the structure, where there's no other visual impact uh, to any other abutting uh, residents or businesses. Um, I think it's, I, I don't have a problem with it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm afraid I have to take, ex I'm afraid I disagree with, with Tom. Non-inhabitable means it can't be inhabited, not that it won't be by design. This is something that could be inhabited, okay? If you look at the exceptions, flagpoles, chimneys, radio and television antenna, windmills, silos, water tanks, those cannot be inhabited. This room, 1,200 square feet, clearly could be, could be inhabitable. It's not non-inhabitable. By design, it's not meant to be because they're not going to use it that way, but it could be inhabitable. And it's part of the structure. And our oath is to uphold the bylaw, and um, I, I, I couldn't vote for this. I, but, uh, my, my rebut would simply be that uh, while the whether it's 1,200 or 1,000 or 600 or, or 2,000, you're right. It could become an inhabitable environment. Um, but I think, I think that we could put constraints on it which would limit its use uh, <coughs> so that uh, that would be considered uh, a violation to convert it at any point in time, which could which would elicit a cease and desist order from the building inspector. Um, and if, if I understand what you're talking about doing up there, is you're, in, in, a not, in layman terms, is you're putting all the HVA stuff, HVAC stuff upstairs, yes. on the roof. Right. So, I, you know, 
to turn it into a habitable room, <coughs> they're, they're dis it'd be like you and I saying, you know what, we're taking all our furnace and a lot of plumbing out of our basement and somehow going to have to put it somewhere else yeah. and take care of the house. It'd be a major disruption of the structure. Um, it's part of the structure. It's not separate from the rest of the structure. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, it's not an internally heated, plumbed, or wired structure. As I understand, there's probably just barely plumbing and electrical going to it. There's no, it, and, and it's, it's, it's almost like a shed, except it's up on the roof. Part of the same building. It's on top of the building. <laughs> oh, it's not a different building. It's part of the same building. Well, that's fine, but is it accessible to the internal part of that building? It's habitable. Non-inhabitable means cannot be inhabitable. How are they going to get into it? This could the building. Building. Are you going to, how's the access? The, the, the access is from inside. It's from the inside of the building. The whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole idea is that the equipment is there. It's very sophisticated. It's way beyond a typical HVAC rooftop unit sure. and it requires regular maintenance right. and what they're looking to do is to make it <coughs> as safe as possible for the people that, that need to go up there periodically to, to service the equipment. Sure. The, if you could take a walk through building 6 that's <coughs> being outfitted now and see the maze of pipes and so forth that are go that's going into it. It's unbelievable. It, it is really unbelievable. It is. Uh, like and that. Like so that. it's, it's I mean, serving I, laboratory space. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lab. Yeah, yeah. And the HVAC equipment is co is complex. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't see the space as inhabitable. I, I mean, I built many of these kind of um, mechanical our, rooms. Um, our whole premise is that it's non inhabitable. And any type of condition you want to impose to that effect is fine because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a mechanical room. That would cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to pull that stuff out of there. For the sake of doing what, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's the, the question. In the future, could it be inhabitable? But you'd have to pull all that equipment out, and it just wouldn't be worthwhile. May I? It's also very easy for us to restrict this. Okay, with the, with the provision of the lease. So if there's a provision for that, if hypothetically this was approved, we can just make that contingent in the lease, okay, which gives us more teeth should there ever be an issue. We don't anticipate there would be, but if that would make the board feel better, we can guarantee that that would be included in a final lease document. Is the tenant responsible for maintenance of this stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of it process equipment. Yeah, but the, anything we do goes to the owner, not the town. No. I mean, my suggestion was that you condition it on it being permanently unhabitable. Yeah, that's what I would do. And we yeah. end of sentence. Right. Because that's why we're here. And yeah, we make that an attachment to the lease. It's yeah. part of a, well, a potential. Yeah. Your decision, though, gets recorded and runs with the land. It's not just for bio labs. Right, right. It's free. Right. It's there. It's that good point. Yeah. It's the point. I, I have to say, trying to take a room of this size and analogize it to a flagpole, chimney, antenna, windmill, it's not the intent of the bylaw. That non-inhabitable means could never be in my mind, and I'm sorry. That's, but that's what we're suggesting, that it never be inhabitable. And Right. The last, the last. And everybody who comes before us who wants to say, hey, guess what? I want, I'm going to have a 40 foot single, uh, I'm going to have a single story or a single a house, but I'm going to have an attic and it's going to be just an attic with a pitched roof. And it's going to be 40 feet, but you know what? I'll guarantee that nobody will ever live up there because it's a pitch true. Uh, it already violates the bylaw. That was exactly what I was going to say. It's not as though we're proposing to build a great room above a garage, but say, no, it's only for storage. No one will ever live there. It's a totally different animal. And the bylaw itself says public utility structures and similar non-inhabitable structures. That's 
That's what uh, it is. I understand. Yeah, and, it's a and, mechanical and, and, I, 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 get, I do get your and point, and but I, I, you know, I, it as that. it says, it's a Bible non, world. similarly non-inhabitable. I, 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 okay, so take a single family house that somebody wants to put up with an attic and says, hey, the top five feet of my house, you know, it's an attic, I, I can't inhabit it, you know. From now on, everybody gets a 40 foot house in Raleigh. But that, that doesn't fall within your bylaw provision. <coughs> yeah, it does. It, it does. Because you're saying it's not inhabitable because it's an attic now. And I, I, I don't think, I don't think. We're, we're saying it's a utility building. structure that's non-inhabitable. We're not building a house. We're not building anything that could ever have. Sir, it says public utility structure. And similar non-inhabitable structures. It's, right. I mean, it's a public it's not the best not written thing in the world, but, no. okay. you know, it's... Okay, uh, to me, I think it's pretty clear what it means, and I, I'm i thinking about single-family homes when somebody says, I want to go 37 feet, I want to go 38 feet, and it's a pitch roof, and all of a sudden, 35 comes up to whatever they want to say because they're not going to use their attic. Doesn't, you know, we got a bylaw. Well, uh, well, uh, okay. Wait a minute. When, when you, when you, when you, let me make a point if I may respond. When you talk about that example, yeah. you're, you're, that's one. Yeah. Okay, you're, you, well, you're talking about residential housing, mm -hmm. and as as was pointed out here, and as our bylaws state, the measurement on flat roofs are to the point of the flat roof. When you look at a ha when you look at a residential property that doesn't have a flat roof, it takes into account an average mean point of the peak. This is a flat roofed building, so in my mind, the actual height of this building is not this adjunct element of what's being put on top of it. Whether you want to look at it as part of it or not, if it were the whole roof area they were looking to enclose, I would. Be, it would be much easier for me to accept your definition of that hitting into that 35 plus area. But it seems to me that what, what you have here is you've got a roof height at the flat level point that is well within the <coughs> bylaw height and the extension in a portion of the roof, not the entire roof, not even 50% of the roof, is, is going to protrude up into a over on a height level. And to me, I think we can condition the habitable use out of it. I think if they are prepared, we can even condition it so that we make it so that you have to put it in the lease. Not, not that it's just like, oh, by the way, I hope you remember to write it in the lease, but that it's actually, you know, there and can be, you can be found in violation of this. Approval should that occur. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'm still back to it not being a habitable issue because the law is, I don't really know what you're right. It's a flagpole. This is not like that's any why of those they things. Put, that's why they put definite flagpole, chimney, radio, you know, things that could never be inhabited. No, I, exactly. But I, I don't think, and public inhabitable, I agree. It's like a pump house. So. No, public utility. No, public utility. That's like a pump okay. house, right? Well, you think, well, that's no one's ever going to I don't think I'm going to change your mind. Uh, you won't. You're going to change my no. mind. So, right. Let's, uh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> could I ask a dumb question? You're a, you're a, I ask lots of them. You're a five member board? Yes, sir. And the members are one, two, three, four, five. Right. right. Okay. All right. But it needs four to pass. Under our rules, you need four to Yeah, that's state law. Uh, can I say something? I, I, uh, I sympathize with your problem, but I am hesitant to allow <coughs> the 40-foot extension. The 35-foot is in there for a reason. what the planning board said in his letter. Uh, I 
will be very skeptical about granting this because they could open up a channel. Exception here, and then and open up the cat of worms to something else. I know you people from, uh, sympathize with you trying to take care of your tenant. Uh, most of the if, if, the if the planning board uh, agreed to it, I would have uh, behave better. I don't think we should. You've got a good issue here. We, we have to go back there anyhow, yes. Okay. Yeah, we, they'd have to go back and modify their site plan and special permits to the planning board. So that's that's a separate hurdle. You know, you're you're the board that has jurisdiction over what we're asking for, which is first to overturn the building inspector, or second to give us a variance for what we're looking to do. And if you do I'm um, you know, getting the sense that you don't want to overrule your building inspector. So maybe we talk about a dimensional variance now because that's the alternative that we've asked for. But in either case, they've got to go back because they didn't have a building per se to bring to the planet, or they had a footprint, I suspect. And they'll, they'll have to, they'll, it's not, it isn't a minor modification to my way of thinking. And even if it was, they would still be back there looking to have that. Sort of but the height issue is is for you, really, not for the planning board. I know, I know, these people, like great people, and they've got a lot for the town and everything, everything else. And, uh, and I know that. Uh, However, Mr. Chairman, perhaps we should perhaps we should vote on the first part of the application because yeah. it's a two-part application, yeah. so they know where they stand on that and preserve their appeal rights. Okay. I mean, I mean unless you, but I mean, I think they have. It, it's a bifurcated appeal. It, it, it's an appeal plus an application for a, for a variance. So I think we have to vote on both. Did you, did you ever submit to the building inspector in writing your request for interpretation of the height? Because all I see is his response that sounds like, Sandy, I wanted to give you feedback to your application. Here's a problem. Uh, I don't think I did in writing. I took a set of drawings down to review with him. Right. Uh, and that this was this is the outcome of it. I mean, I, th I think of the building inspector as the, the gatekeeper, and this answers to the uh, whether it, the penthouse could be inhabitable. Right. Well, <clears throat> you'd have to go back and get a building permit to change the use. It's not any different than turning an attic into right. a habitable space. Right. I mean, you need to go back and get a building permit. And there's, and there's the gatekeeper. I mean, I don't think we can guarantee that something is not going to do something illegal. Right. But uh, the magnitude of this this mechanical penthouse just doesn't lend itself to that sort of situation. Yeah. No, I was looking for the, the, the a paper trail issue because I, I well I know but you don't want to make them go mean, back you don't want no, to make no, them no, start no, all over no no I, no I, well they're going to have to go back if 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 we do not pass it <coughs> they got to go back to them and but unless and they get a variance they're they already the second part first they're already we know the building department's already skeptical so they're they're well, probably and perhaps the planning board well I'm saying the planning 
board. I'm sorry. I meant to say the planning board. Uh, but he, uh, Ken won't do anything until he's fairly confident that either we have approved it and then ultimately they approve it. Because they're going to have to go back regardless. Um, and if they have to go back to them with, a, with you know, both of the client, if we don't, if we uphold Ken, and my position on Ken is that it's not real clear. I, he didn't really make a decision. He offered an opinion. As, well, way I, 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 did, I think he said they had a Well, what, what, what happened, just for background, is when Sandy and I talked about this first, I said to him, you'll have to get a formal letter from the building inspector in order to be able to appeal his decision. And, and I still, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I still yeah. think there's plenty of room to interpret this provision differently than you folks appear to, but I'm the one who told him just, he's got to give you something in writing or we don't have an appeal to base coming to you for. So right. that's, that's where his letter came from. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk about a variance if you're inclined to have that conversation with us. Because that's well. What you've said in your application is, if we do not overturn the building inspector, then right. you would like us to consider a variance. And I agree. You need to vote on. And I think we have one. to vote on whether or not we overturn the building inspector's decision first. Right. Because if we don't, if we don't need to get to the second. Wait. Right. Right. Exactly. So maybe this is. <coughs> I'm sorry. Should, would it be smart to withdraw and go to the plan board? Well, well, I mean, he has a right to have his application for a variance heard. <clears throat> the planning board can't help us with the height. Uh, they're going right. to just send us back here again right. a second time. Right. What, what I was going to ask you, which is probably not kosher, but if you're going to vote down our request to overturn the building inspector, which it seems like you're going to. Yes, we could ask to withdraw without prejudice, but I guess I get the sense that you're trying to help us, and if you're in any sense favorably inclined to give us a variance, we don't care which way it happens. We just want to be able to do what right. we can do there. The I, I think there's a... I don't, yeah, I, I, I can't give you that false from, only from one vote. Okay. I, I, I can't say I... I'm going to talk you into it. <laughs> or I'm going to try. You want that? <laughs> well, yeah. can I say something? Yes. You know, this is, it really all comes back to habitable, unhabitable. I mean, what what are the planning board's concerns going to be? It's going to be the same as when we went through the first site plan review, parking, septic issues and, and things like that, which is what they're, they're looking at. So this being uninhabitable eliminates all of the planning board's issues other than the sight line issues, I think. I think the buildings are high. Mr. I mean, most of this mechanical equipment could sit up there on the roof as long as it didn't have a roof on top of it. Right, right, right. right? right. And all we're talking That's about right. doing is putting a roof on top of it, top of it, to make it easier for the tenant to main, maintain his equipment, make it safer for the tenant to maintain his equipment. And I wonder if it would help if we knew what the equipment was. Well, no, I don't but, think but really I, 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 no, I think the, the, the precedent is right. look, you've got an enclosed structure. You've got walls. You got a roof, mm. and it's the part of the other structure, and it's 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 accessible from the inside. That's potentially, easily potentially happen. How about a canopy? Yeah. That'll be protecting the roof. Well, they they're looking to protect the people, not necessarily the equipment, but just to protect it and to allow it to be serviced in the winter. Yeah. Well, I understand that. I mean, we all work out in the winter. Mm -hmm. I mean, but these aren't just rooftop units up, up there. These are <coughs> complicated, large air handling units no, that... I, no, I don't know. And they could be anywhere. I mean, they have line room out there. Yeah, they they, have they, they, they could be on the ground floor. Yeah. Could I make a suggestion? Sure. Instead of taking a formal vote on the building inspector's issue, 
can we table that and talk about the variance? <coughs> well, I don't. If I can, have, I have, a, if I can have a two-minute recess, we can. Okay with me? Just why can't use the men's room? <laughs> so what do you think? You want you want to take a recess? Take a recess. Yeah, yeah I'd like to. Yeah. Uh, take five. Yeah. We'll take five. Okay. We'll take a recess. Thank you. Okay. Good. Want to shut that off? We recess. I'm going to follow you up.
that space up. I'm telling you, everything is cleaned, the equipment. I had to make exceptions on the building in front that they don't have enough room to work on things because it's, and you know, I had to do it. You have to do it. You kind of, kind of work with something here. I, I know, but. You know, it's, it, like, it's not what's like. What's the point of having the bylaw then? I just, just to well, say, well, do well, what's the point of having the Zoning Board of Appeals, too? You yeah. Kind of make exceptions. So we can do like a special permit and put in that nobody can have a visa. Because we have guidelines that kind of indicate how, how we have to. No, I agree. You're about. right. And Kenny's right, too. But I think, you know, the times have changed. And, and, I mean, if you've ever seen what's in you, this building and the other building next to it, you would understand more. I know, but the, the, the other side of that coin is like I've heard people say, look, these are great people, they're doing good things, so let's give them whatever no, they want. Yeah, I, and you can't do that. That's your... Well, I don't think these people are great, but we're going to I wasn't many of these people. I met other people, and I've heard people say these are great people. Too late. That wasn't even with us, was it? Wait, did you know I was drinking it? So, oh, my God. So can we just okay. forget about the building inspector for a minute, and let me ask you. I don't have a problem. With for a dimensional variance? Because that's even harder. Oh, no, no. Okay, first of all. First of all, uh, you don't qualify for a variance all right. in the town of Rowley. You might need to switch in Oxford and everywhere else. The town of Rowley is not Oxford. Variance is very difficult to get. We could grant a special permit to allow that to happen. Okay. I mean that 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 would be my offer, the suggestion, would be that um, that we permit, it's special permitted. The variance in Rowley is a very restrictive form of what variances are. They're only grantable under very specific topographical conditions which prevent an applicant from completing an element of their project in a particular way such that without granting them that variance, there's no other possible way to do that. And, and I don't think you came prepared thinking you would need to try to present that aspect of this project, or that it might even be an element of the variance. The common interpretation of a variance is we're going to grant something that's not covered by the bylaw, it's not clear in the bylaw, so we're, gonna, we're just going to go ahead and grant it because we have the right to do that. The town of Raleigh has not given this board that right. So we cannot, we, we would not grant a variance. Sure However, uh, we do have a full authority under a special permit to, to grant the right to approve certain variations based upon our interpretation of bylaw that are allowable, if necessary, under certain conditions. And in, in my personal opinion, um, your case falls well within that range to, to grant a permit that would allow for a very specific type of construction in a very specific place on that roof under very certain conditions that would be restricted by um, uh, leasehold elements that you would restrict in any tenant in that property. Um, and that would basically get an agreement from you saying that it would you would never do anything to you know inhabit it. Um, I, I don't I don't see it as a Pandora's box uh, because the next person that comes up here I may say I'm still doing this which I just got appointed for five more years so if you do another one you'll still run into me again. Um, the it's a case-by-case -case basis, and I think, I think our board is here to make judgment calls, and I think Dave's point is, is right. I mean, the, you guys are doing stuff that I don't understand, but to me, I don't even need to, I don't need to be concerned. I'm, I'm looking at your building, looking at what you do, look at what I know you probably are going to use this for. Um, I'll make it difficult for anybody to have anything besides a pair of gloves on in that room. Uh, 
uh, when they're working up there. And if, and if it's ever identified as any other use, you'll have to get out of that room. You won't be able to maintain it. And I don't think you are going to take that kind of risk. And I don't think the tenant is either. I've been a commercial tenant myself, and I've had to have access. I've had people that I pay to have access <coughs> to maintain this kind of stuff. And even though I don't build it, I mean, Donna has. but. I know what you're doing up there. I know the kind of stuff that you got to think around. I've worked in power generation plants, and I know that it's it's unbelievable what was done. It's just another special permit, I guess. Well, I mean, that's my read. Yeah, that's my read. I, I, to the planning board. I mean, I think we have to. I think we have to uphold Ken's interpretation of the bylaw. I think his interpretation of the bylaw was accurate. There's an issue. There is a height issue, and that's basically what he said. You know, the habitable definition to me is so vague, it could mean exactly the ability to possibly make something inhabitable. It could be something that's clearly habitable. It could be something that's a canopy. What really is habitable? What do we really mean by it? It doesn't say that in our bylaw. No, it says non-inhabitable, which means if you well, think about it logically, it means it could not be. So that's a, but a I still, much, higher, much higher standard for the applicant. Well, that may be, but I still don't know what that word means. I, I, I don't really know what non-inhabitable is because I'm not sure how, what that bylaw meant to me as habitable. So I'm prepared to say it's clear this is not inhabitable, that there's no intent to have it. If you were going to say, well, we, we, Look, we want to put an extra 10,000 square feet. If you're suggesting that they come back under a different section of the bylaw with a different request, with different standards, I have no problem. Well, but, in considering that, certainly. Well, that's fine, but they but not did apply. This application. Well, they applied under both conditions here. If we can't get this, let's, let's get They that. applied under, they appeal the building inspector's decision, or they ask for a variance. I, I don't even know. I, I'm sure you're right, but I'm not. I, I don't have in front of me the section of the bylaw that you're talking about that would allow us to convert what is their application to a different application? No, no, no. Would it help to know what's going in there? No. No. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, it make sense to me. I don't care what it is. If, well, uh, where's the, where's if the you're front of the application? If your determination is that our request can be handled as a special <coughs> permit instead of a variance, you have, you have the right to do that right on the spot. I know that, but I'm not sure what. Tom was referring to, in other words, I... No, well, what, what, what Bob is referring to is, and this, this becomes also a technicality for us, is that we have a line item entry on our application, um, one of which says you can apply for a variance from the requirements of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or separate line item, special permit. Um, and thirdly, as properly checked, as a party agreed by a building inspector's decision. Now, candidly, um, there have been more than one occasion where the assumption about what a variance is as opposed to a special permit um, is not clear. And it's incorrectly identified as this is the avenue to go. Uh, because it's not clear what our variants can and cannot do. We do have the ability, I think we can, unless you don't want us to, unless we no, have no. to act on this as what it is, because if it is, then I agree with you, we can't do the variants and we're not going to, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, override Ken's reading of it, in which case the option is for them to reapply. Now that's a time issue. <coughs> For them to reapply 30 days out. Well, as a special permit under which we then. If they're going to. Okay. And is that okay? But if they're going to apply under a special permit, they've got to tell us what section and what are the criteria. Well, and I don't know. Well, I don't, I don't have. You know, I thought you had something in mind as far as a specific reference that could be somehow lend itself to, to, a, to an ad hoc amendment. Yeah, but I don't think so. No. I don't. I don't. Well, is that, it's I'll a pure table, judgment call. 
I'm, I'm happy to, to not vote on anything. I'm happy to table anything. Um, I don't want to cut off anybody's right to present anything they want to present. <coughs> but this isn't about you and me, maybe. No. The chairman should. Right. Uh, no. no. Let us know where he wants to go. No. I, I don't think, frankly, I mean, I, I think your arguments as stated in your letter under the two clauses you noted are, would be the same. I don't, I, you know. With respect to the variance or special permit, you mean? No, no. With, with, There is a reasonable position to take, which Bob is taking, which is to say, you know, we can only act on the application as it's presented. You know, attorneys know that there are evidence that occurs that may impact a jury's decision, but the court says you can't think about it. In this particular case, you just have to look at what you have. And right here, we have two applications in my you know, we can't really, two components of your application, and we can't really, you know, we can act on one, and I can't, we can't really act on the other. We can't grant you a variance, as requested. I, I would think Unless there's a way to, before you ask us to amend it to a special permit, you might well want to consider the bylaw and craft your, craft your, factual arguments to the specifics of the special permits. They're not a whole lot different than right. the criteria in, yeah. in the variance section, to be honest with you. I wouldn't find them personally. I mean, we're talking, let's just talk in the abstract. We're talking about a 25-acre site that's virtually invisible yes. to the general public. Yes. We're talking about a de minimis increase in the height of a portion of a building that's otherwise allowed as a matter of right will be used as a matter of right for light industrial purposes. Right. We're asking for a very minimum dimensional variance, which is a factor you're entitled to take into account when making your decision. We're not asking for 50 feet, we're asking for five. Mm -hmm. And there is a financial component to the variance statute that basically says if not granting the variance imposes a financial hardship on the applicant, that's a factor you can take into account. To do other than what we want to do here means we're affecting parking. We have lots of wetlands on this property that are going to have to be taken into account. Wetlands are soil conditions under 40A Section 10 under the Variance Statute. They're, they're all good arguments, in my opinion, for a dimensional variance to allow that five-foot height increase. If you want it phrased as a special permit, I, I suppose I can do that, but the facts and the criteria. Answer me a question. Sure. What's the height of that structure? What's the height inside? Uh, of the okay. penthouse or whatever you want to call yeah. it, mechanical. Mechanical. What's the height from the floor to the ceiling? <coughs> Around 10 or 12 feet. So it was part of the structure below. Oh, it was going from 26. Yeah. 26 to well, I mean, the, the 26 feet. is That's basically 14 feet. It's part floor. Of 13 to 13 to get two stories to get to the 26. I, I, to answer your question, I don't think I don't think anybody knows yet. Yeah, I, I, I can yeah, I can visualize. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean the way I the way I envision this space, looking at the building in Ipswich that we're actually very familiar with because we did the whole exterior of the building, yeah. my company, uh, and the one that's being constructed now 
Uh, you've been in building six. I mean, it's like there's pathways between the equipment. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, they have exit signs. Yeah, right. Which way to go in, mm -hmm. in this, in right. this Don't turn equipment around, you go that hallway way. Yeah. to get out, to get in and out of the space. Yeah. That's how, that's how restricted it is. I mean, the, the notion that someone's going to convert it to something else, I mean, it just, it isn't, it isn't a reasonable thing. But it can be, it can be restricted. We have special permits. We must have a dozen of them from the planning board over the last 20 years. And there's all sorts of provisions in those special permits for everything that the planning board controls. We've never violated one of them. Deal's a deal. Yeah, and, I see. I, to, to go to your question, if I may, I, the variance requires us to really make all kinds of justifications based upon hard evidence that there was a problem topographically with the land. And what you submitted to us by having gone to that planning board is that here's a beautiful building, it's all set, we're all good to go, do you like everything? Yup, 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 is everything right? Is parking good? Yup, 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 yup. Everything is signed off on. And then life changes because as you say, you now have a tenant who appears and you've got empty space and you want to modify that building. So now you're faced to have to make an adjustment to the building, even though you admitted up front with the original application that there really was nothing wrong with the land, there was nothing wrong with the building, there was nothing wrong with the design. It just so happens we've got a tenant whose application requires such that we need to give him space to do what he wants to do. So we've got to do this. So it, it would be much easier, in my opinion, to not try to go the variance route, which, which is harder for us to justify, because we have to make all these points back to see, here was the problem, it was a problem with building the building over here, so they had to move it 25 feet, which put it in the setback, et cetera, et cetera. Much more open-ended under a special permit for us to say, okay, we'll grant the following under these very specific conditions, which could include a height limitation, not an open-ended, here's, here's a 10,000 square foot space, you know, you, we're going to look for you to give us some input as to couldn't possibly be more than X, because we're only going to grant you X amount of feet. Right. So if you turned around and some of your engineers said to you, I need two more feet, you say, I got a problem. Either you've got to find another way, or now i got to go back and ask for more. They didn't like it in the first place. So. You know, we'll look to tie you in as tightly as we can, but we have much, much more easily open discretion in doing that under those conditions with a special permit and that it, runs with the building. Yep, and, and I understand the difficulties with variances and, you know. At least some, in our town. If it were somewhere else and it was a dimensional some, variance, some we could say, well, listen, if, if you're time. in Hamilton, you don't get variances. Right. I've, okay. Okay. I've tried you don't get variances. Okay. and failed. Yeah. And frankly, I don't think that's right because that's not what the variant statute is for. The, I agree. The variant statute is to assist somebody with a unique problem that can't really be sorted out otherwise without costing lots of money or affecting the, the land. But exactly. I, I get your point. I mean, variances are difficult to get. If we were here for a use variance, my guess is we couldn't even ask for it. Right. Because most of these towns don't allow your board to issue them. So I don't have any problem asking for a special permit. The, the facts will all be the same if, you're, if your pleasure is that that's what we come and ask you for. Well, then the question then goes to your point is, you know, since you haven't asked for that now, do we want to go through? Is there yeah, a way to... Yeah, you've got to figure out. I mean, under the bylaw, it could be the, could be the planning board, the board of appeals, the board of selectmen. So you've got to figure out which is the SPGA. Well, I think, I, I think we're still I dealing with the height issue. It's our issue. The height issue okay. is always yeah. our issue. The planet, they okay. can, they, they'll well, go back to the planning board. They'll send board. us here. They'll still say go over there. Because Ken's always going to send them here. It's our issue. The only issue is the well, right no, issue. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's 
No, no, no. Well, but Ken, well, yeah, but Ken made the call and says, I think it's... What are you looking at? Well, 7811 just says certain classes of special permits may be issued by the granting authority, which will be the planning board, the board of appeals, the board of selectmen, as designated by the bylaw. And I was trying to find which one made it clear that it was us. Um, uh, the, the bylaw of the state. Um, 7811. I'd like to thank the board for its time. Um, I have children that I need to oh, yes. go to, so <laughs> yeah. um, thank, One of thank you. Thank you. Mine has 7811 has special permits. Here's a site plan. Yeah, I, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Got the updates. Well, there's on the back. We've got 781. Yeah, like this. Yeah, absolutely. I got this one. Yeah, this one is 781. Oh, this is. That's not one. These are the rules. That's not the bad. Yeah. 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 But he's got 7811 as site plan. No, we got the same thing. General, certain class of special permits. Now, the, the, the building height. I just want to make sure we're the granting authority. We've always been the granting here. Behind, yes. Since you brought it up, I thought I thought you were going to say, "Oh well, here's, that's easy. Here's the authority for us." That's it. Okay, according to his application. He's applied for a variance under 6.5.1.1, 6.5.1.4. Five, five, uh, we can't grant a variance. All right. Uh, there's a deed, and he's also been checked as a deed for decision from the building inspector. We can't act on that. I'm going to suggest that we act on that. without prejudice or the other. How about if we just not deny anything at this point and 
I'd rather not withdraw without prejudice. I'd almost rather continue this hearing and allow us to modify our special permit, modify our application to the special permit. But if if you want a new application for a special permit, that's what we'll give you. As far as I'm concerned, if the if the facts are essentially the same, and I guess they are, I would not oppose a continuance with, with the uh, request to amend. Okay. And the only, the, only, the only thing I'll say is I'm looking under Board of Appeals, under administration, and again, it's not the clearest thing in the world, but it says in exercising its powers under Section 7.1.2, that's the Board of Appeals and what they have jurisdiction over. The Board shall act in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, right. which is the special permit statute. Yeah, it's 7811 that I was confused by. 7811. Here's the building height reference, 65. Uh, no, 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 but I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Okay. You're talking about I which authority? Did I did I cite it correctly there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just doesn't tell you what what classes. I know. Are. That's that's the first thing I looked at was special permits yeah. when when uh, Tom mentioned it. I yeah. says, okay, here's special permits. Okay, let's just make sure that it's us that has it. I mean, I hate to have you Hold go it. through this and then find out. Well, I can do it to the wrong board. I can tell you this: if we apply for a special permit, and it's you can do this on the fly. I'm not suggesting you ought to do it tonight necessarily, but if you apply for the wrong thing and the board grants it to you and there's no appeal filed, right. it's valid. You record it and it's over. That's what the 20 day appeal period is for. Right. And That's true. I mean, I'm willing, I'm willing to take the gamble that we can apply for a special permit uh, because I don't think any of the special permit criteria are particularly difficult to, to meet. I understand the variance problem. Um, yeah, and, and you know, the, the setback law simply doesn't say we're the special permit granting authority. It simply says these are the setback regulations, and if you do something that impacts those, you're creating a non conforming structure, and any non conforming kind of situation is what has to come to us and that's all it does here with the height. It just says what the height limitation is. It doesn't say who deals with it. But anytime there's a non-conforming event that's occurring, which is what's occurring here, is it falls in front of our board. So now, so I don't know. I have to defer to the chairman on that. I don't know. I, I have to assume you're correct. I mean, I, I, I got no reason to think you aren't, but I just asked the question. It doesn't seem to define who is the special permit granting authority uh, for such a. I mean, no, it doesn't. It makes sense, it's us. No, it doesn't. You, you have to, the only thing that, that, if you go back to 542, changes to non performing single and two family residential structures which are not authorized. Uh, those are residential structures. So if they go back to the height, we'd rather go back with your blessing. Yeah, and I, I guess my thought is this: um, this is actually an expansion to an existing building. So there may be you're adding on to it. Yeah, there may be better grounds to ask for a special permit under those circumstances than if we were building 
a freestanding brand new building and we just wanted to build it higher than was allowed. That's it. And, and under the special permit provisions, I also noticed that we do have to have a recommendation from the planning board about a special permit. So I think you have to ask the planning board about their opinion about a special permit. Um, if you want to have your basis covered now. Well, I, yeah, I, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, there, are you, do you, I mean, if we continue, it remains an open case here. And, and I, I, I think Bob is right. If we're not going to turn, if we're not going to agree to say, okay, listen, let's interpret this as actually an application for a special permit. Let's act on it as a special permit now. If we're not going to do that, then, then I think we might as well uphold, act on the two actions we have, uphold the building inspector, um, deny the application for a variance, and ask them to turn around and submit an application for a special permit with the understanding that the board will probably act favorably on a special permit that addresses the points we well, talked about. No, I was going to allow them to, to amend their, their request for a variance. Well, is that go back to the do? planning? Well, well, while we continue this to next month and uh, you request uh, modification of your application. It's going to be the same thing. But well, it's, yeah, we, I, it's we're not we're really not going to change the facts. No, no I, we're I, just going I, to right. change the but, heading on the application. Right. And there's the criteria for a special permit are different, so we can go through those. Those aren't real complicated. That's that's fine. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. I mean, I'd rather you didn't deny everything in front of you now and just no, no, we're not going to no, continue to vote. Continue not going to vote anything tonight. Okay, then that's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, that's fine. You know, I'm. I'm I'm sure you're looking at the calendar. We're all looking yes. at the calendar. That's, well, that's yes, my are. concern. We are. For, as applicants for you. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're going to come back to us and amend their application. Does that then allow us to ignore the application so we're acting on an amended application? No. So we're going to have to, we're still going to have to vote on these things. We're going to have to vote then on that. Ex accept this, deny this, but accept that. No, accept the decision of the building inspector, deny the variance, and then approve the special permit. Is that the scenario that you're thinking? <laughs> you, can, you can do no. it that way, or we'll withdraw this application well, completely yeah. well, with that's prejudice. My, that's my question. That's what I, I would just assume to have well, you do that. Right. Well, what, what the, if, I mean, after the special permit here. Yeah, I, I would think you want to. Because we want to. I, I want to amend, amend, amend yes. the yeah. variance. Right. You want to amend the variance mm -hmm. request to a special permit so that you, that is not denied. You hear it's only amended. the special permit. Right. right. <clears throat> yeah. I think so. We withdraw with prejudice. And we, can, and we can do it as a continuation so we don't have to go back and re advertise it and so right. forth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, right. right. It's right. just a continuation. Right. So it just, it, it, it just, so you buy, it puts you 30 days out, right? So I, I think you folks should probably take a vote. To allow us to do that, to uh, we just need to vote to continue. Well, okay. I, I have no problem if, if the applicant wants to request that we continue it and allow them to amend. I would so move. Okay, second. I think that's the right vote. All right, all right. All right. You made that a motion. I have. Yes, he is. I second it. Okay, we'll second. All right. All right. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, no, don't say that. I do need you to sign that. Okay. I didn't quite. No, I know. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
You're going to challenge None of us wrote this. This is the problem. No, no.